Open Your Mind Week continues, and today's topic, Darwin versus God. But we're going to call it intelligent design because we want to get this video into classrooms. A while back we made a show on the scientific method. It got featured on YouTube and the flame war began. All we were trying to say is that lots of stuff is labeled science that isn't really scientific, and some people have started treating science like a religion. But no one really paid attention to what we actually said. The whole thing just degenerated into a discussion, debate, no, catfight, about evolution versus intelligent design. But I'm going to stick by my original assertion that some people do treat science like a religion, and among them, noted evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins. He's like the poster child for neo-Darwinism. You know, like the Pope for Catholicism or Tom Cruise for Scientology-ism. He's also the guy who said, As a scientist, I'm pretty hostile to a rival doctrine. Rival doctrine? I looked up doctrine in my dictionary. It's defined as a belief or set of beliefs held by a church, political party, or other group. But focus on the beginning. A doctrine is a belief. So just like any other religious zealot, Dr. Dawkins is hostile to opposing beliefs, like creationism and intelligent design. Because they're the same thing, right? Well, no, they're not. And who do I call as my expert witness? Dr. Richard Dawkins. In an interview with Ben Stein for the movie Expelled, he stated quite clearly that no one knows how life started and that there's a real possibility that life on this planet may have been seeded or influenced by higher forms of life. Like aliens or something. Told you they were here. I gotta make this into a hat somehow. So he agrees that life could have been influenced or created by someone not from around here. So what are we fighting about? Semantics. You see, Dr. Dawkins doesn't like it when people call the extraterrestrial God. Probably because he got paddled in Sunday school as a kid. Hooray! The debate is over! We solved the intelligent design evolution war! Now we can all be friends again. And now people can teach intelligent design in schools. Some people hope to use that as a stepping stone to teach creationism in the classroom. But think about that, guys. Do you really want the Bible taught in schools? I remember what high school English teachers did to Tom Sawyer. Ruined. Forever. Do you really want them doing that with your holy writ? Maybe we should just stick to ABCs, 123s, and boiling things in test tubes. Beyond that, I have one real major issue with intelligent design. It's not science. At least, no one to date has been able to show me the theory in a truly scientific light. They say some things are complex, so complex that they must have been created intelligently rather than accidentally. Okay. But at what point of complexity? I mean, where do you draw the line? It seems arbitrary, and that's not very scientific. Uh, maybe we shouldn't teach it as science. Maybe philosophy or something. But there are other philosophies that get taught in science class. You know, like evolution. Whoa, buddy. Don't tangle with the Dawkins doctrine. Let's examine the facts around evolution. If it ever did take place, it isn't now. At least, not that anyone can demonstrate. And the odds of it happening are really, really, really long. If scientists and educators could own up to that, I'm sure ID never would have even come up. But most people who believe in evolution aren't willing to admit how unlikely it is because it dramatically weakens their argument. And if you disagree that it's unlikely, then you're in another pickle. Because if the odds are good, then you figure we'd have seen evidence of it by now like concrete evidence of it. People like to point out natural selection and the resulting speciation as evidence of evolution because there's a mountain of data to support both of those as testable, observable science. But don't forget, we define what a species is and no amount of ash on trees has ever changed a moth, dark or light, into a bee or a bird. They also like to point at bacterial mutation as evidence of evolution, but I have an issue with that too. We've been watching those little guys since the invention of the microscope over 300 years ago, and while they've changed genetically and adapted as bacteria, they've never evolved into a new, higher form of life. Think about this. If a bacterial generation is 20 minutes and a human generation is 20 years, then they should be evolving 525,000 times faster than we are. And if it took 3.2 million years for Lucy, the alleged missing link to become modern man, we should expect to see similar evolutionary advancements in bacteria in a period of just six years. Wow. And I'm talking about real evolution, not just slight alterations to DNA or building up immunities to this or that, but transforming, actually evolving into something more complex, a brand new form of life, a higher form of life. They ought to have their own little civilization and have bactomobiles and at least be insects by now. I don't know. Evolution has been observed. It's just that it hasn't been observed while it's happening, says Dawkins. It's rather like a detective coming on a murder after the scene, and you, the detective, hasn't actually seen the murder take place, of course, but what you do see is a massive clue, huge quantities of circumstantial evidence. 
It might as well be spelled out in words of English. But ooh, 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 Dr. Dawkins, pick me, pick me. Circumstantial evidence is subject to interpretation and doesn't necessarily prove anything. It's like seeing two bones on the ground 40 feet apart and assuming it came from the same animal. Skull cap, thigh bone, Java man. The evidence of evolution may indeed spell out a message in plain English. We've never seen it happen. We can't prove it happened. We can't reproduce it, but it's the best we've got, so we have to believe it which is a pretty poor qualifier for teaching it as an undeniable fact to impressionable young minds. Why don't we just teach the truth? We don't know how life came about. Why is that so threatening? You can't prove that evolution happened, or that it didn't. It's beyond the current capacity of science to draw a conclusion with any degree of certainty. And if we were to subject evolutionary theory to the same rigors that scientists want to impose on ID, it probably wouldn't pass the test to be classified as science either. So you think we made them mad? All of them? Hey, whether you're into creationism, ID, or evolution, you know where our website is. Flame responsibly.